Welcome, friends. We have returned from death. <laughs> <laughs> from the other side, we're back with a, a follow-up to our most disliked video of all time. Yeah, people <laughs> hated this one. Yeah, we'll be wrapping up the thoughts we had about the Ghostbusters franchise that didn't make it into the Sharp Decline video and uh, playing Ghostbusters the video game in the process. Yeah, Ghostbusters the remake the video game. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll also, of course, be giving our thoughts and reactions to the newest installment uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire the video game. That's the thing everything about this is a fucking video game Yeah, you have to become the fire master <laughs> in the Frozen Empire expansion pack Frozen, Frozenpic, Frozenpic higher. We've been trying to figure out the joke there. There's there's, not there's, there. there's a joke in there somewhere. Frozen Empire, Ozempic, Frozen Empire. There's, it's in there. It's in there. It's just yeah, it's very hard. Comment down below <laughs> with a good joke that we could use here. It's funny because we were just you know talking about Frozen Empire and just like what like, you're kind of just trying to figure out what's going on for a lot of it. Like how are all these things fitting together, you know? Exactly. And Ghostbusters Two does that with the like they're just multi like antagonist approach almost because you have the River of Slime that's like spawning ghosts and demons or whatever, mm -hmm. and the slime gives rise to Vigo. Right. We don't know if Vigo is haunted because there's a concentration of slime under the museum or if there is some synergistic relationship between Vigo and the slime where like he that's also a haunted painting but then because the slime's there it's it's like coming to life and his forehead's bulging out and then the New Yorkers bad vibes are also like a they're also feeding into yes. that but that's the thing it's just you know what it is at a point it's you're a just like what the fuck is supposed to how do we, how do we, how does one stop the other exactly. how are we actually how does one start or, or whatever stop the the other you know what it is it's like a chicken and the egg scenario yeah, like, yeah no it is <laughs> it's a real vigo and the slime situation <laughs> shouldn't laugh at that but the a way that no, a crazy came place in. to put that and that font too like yeah just not even in the game <laughs> just like a <laughs> no black music. screen white text Oh, you know, we, we talked about all those scripts where the Ghostbusters were handing the torch off mm -hmm. to a younger Buster. I, I'm getting past the tor torch right now. Oh my gosh, you're the torch bearer now. I'm a torch buster. <laughs> blast stream. Oh, I've got Fire a... your blast stream, dude. Oh, left. Oh! Get in there and throw a capture stream on that tub of goo. Let's get throw a capture stream on, on that, that tub, tub of goo. goo. <laughs> Guys, remember the hotel from the first movie? David, it, it, it feels like I'm there. <laughs> I'm at the Sedgwick. Do you remember the hotel from the movie, Addison? It's like I'm in it. Do you remember it? It's like I am in it. <laughs> well, hello. You're perfectly safe now, miss. The Ghostbusters are here. Back off, loser. Never gonna happen. <laughs> that approach rarely works with me. I'll show you why later. Okay. Ooh, Whoa! Gross. No! <laughs> Yo! Look, 2009 was a long time ago, but... It wasn't that, it wasn't long, that ago. long ago. Jesus. You know, I mentioned earlier that the Ghostbusters video was our most disliked video, yes. easily. And I think a big part of that was our review of Answer the Call, or people's reaction to it, which people seem to think that we went easy on it. Yeah. So I just want to say for the record, make no mistake, it is a bad movie. It is a very bad movie. It's a fucking terrible movie. Yes. It seemed like more of a misunderstanding yeah. of our review, because like we said it was bad. Multiple it is. times, yeah. But yeah, no, and, and we did kind of want to do like a little bit of a contrast and comparison because some people were saying that we had gone too soft on 2016 and then gone too hard on Afterlife. Right. And we have had multiple conversations about how it's really hard to actually state for ourselves whatever our opinion is on it whatever like which one is actually worse because they're very different types of bad movies yes ghostbusters 2016 is viscerally bad to me those takes that are just cut together from 
imp- improvisation that obviously went on for way too long until the well had long gone dry. This reminds me of a dream I had in college. This reminds me of a game we played at engineering school. This is just the perfect Saturday night. I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you for this. That hurts. It physically hurts to watch. And you like just want to turn it off. I want to yell cut because no one else is yelling cut. Can someone refresh my martini? <laughs> yeah, it's very fucking bad. But Afterlife is also this just corporate product. Exactly. It's just like, how many fucking references can we cram in here? How much fan service can we do? We can make a great looking movie, Mm -hmm. but it's fucking soulless. Despite the whole fucking point of it is supposed to be how much soul it has because it's about family and And catching souls. And catching souls, yeah. And I'd say, honestly, the, the soullessness of afterlife really is what kind of made me reevaluate 2016 a little bit yeah no, totally in comparison i'm like well okay well 2016 sucks but it's trying to be a comedy it's trying to make me laugh and it's failing but it's yes. not trying to just like take money out of my wallet yeah it, i mean i think everybody knows it it, it is painful to like watch someone bomb yeah and that's essentially just like a you know yes. a movie of people bombing is it like is the sensation of cringing different than like the feeling you get when you have to roll your eyes? So I feel like that's the only way I can really describe mm. it. Like it's like second hand yes. embarrassment versus like fuck you. Yes. You know? Yes. Like yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come on, shake a leg. You can move faster than that, can't you? I was waiting for you, Double time, cadet. <laughs> Yo, y'all went exactly in tandem. <laughs> That was perfect. He's been slimed again. Oh, again. Yeah, exactly. Just like in the movie. I remember it. Can I say real quick about Afterlife 2, though? I thought it was so weird that Ghost Egon says absolutely nothing when he shows up. I guess maybe they thought, like, recreating his voice with AI was, like, disrespectful or something. I think that but it's was like you thing. literally recreated his face with, <laughs> with CG graphics. And I, not only that, you actually recreated him from the Ghostbusters 2 movie and then aged, aged him, him throughout his life to recreate him as this character, not how not, he actually aged. Exactly. <laughs> and then Major Ghost version of him. But yeah, the voice, the voice is over the line. We can't make a fake voice for Harold Ramis or get an actor to do it or something. Because it just makes those scenes so awkward to me when he's like finally reuniting with the Ghostbusters and it, this is a tribute to Harold Ramis and they're like kind of saying stuff to him and he just says nothing. Just like stares at them he's and just kind of like nods. Kind of smiles like he's like Frodo when Sam comes to see him in Rivendell. <laughs> Given that Dan Aykroyd has talked about the marvelization of Ghostbusters. Shamelessly. And like in part something we didn't talk about about really in the video but in the 2016 one you get the like ant-man sequence or whatever where she dives into the between dimension mm-hmm. or whatever wherever they're banishing the oh the giant ghostbusters mascot ghost uh too and she's kind of doing this like gandalf and balrog mm-hmm. like diving uh, from the highest uh, mountain but i thought that was opening up a whole new realm of Ghostbusters. I think that was the idea. But then Dan Aykroyd, uh, I guess it's not Dan Aykroyd, though. I guess it's Reitman and Gil Keenan. Well, but well, it's, it's and- not leaning into my predicted Ghostbusters bust in between worlds multiverse. True. You know? True. It's just so disappointing. We could have gotten such more ludicrous movies yeah. <laughs> than we got, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's so, the thing. Not that they would have been good. No, 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 no. I don't think they'll ever make another yeah good one they couldn't even really make two no there's one good ghostbusters movie yeah Yeah. um it really is quite the decline yeah don't add us uh yeah and um furthering that decline is frozen empire oh yes this movie opens with a robert frost poem which is hilarious. Like, guys, this is Ghostbusters. Yes, and also extremely on the nose with Frozen Empire, and you ha- start it with Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. <laughs> okay, all right. Cold things. Honestly, I thought we were going to be dunking on this movie from the get-go. 
didn't really think there was going to be anything that appealed to me necessarily. No, I went into it with an open mind. Right. But just knowing this was a sequel to Afterlife by the same people, I wasn't expecting Yes. Much. That being said, the set piece for the opening scene, post-Robert Frost poem, uh, was actually really good. I actually super dug that. Yeah. I thought it was really reminiscent of like the kind of spooky scenes in the first movie where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, this is like some legitimately well shot, uh, kind of creepy little atmospheric thing. Oh yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah. We start with some firemen leaving their firehouse and going to a, a call and they find there's this room with all of these frozen people inside and then they completely shatter <laughs> the whole tone they've kind of set. Yeah. Um, when we're... We're in 1904 New York City, and suddenly there's a character that looks like she's from a 1994 fighting game <laughs> yeah. on the Sega Genesis. Yes, exactly. As we we began calling her Sonya Blade because we just <laughs> we were talking about her so much because she was just I, I was immediately disappointed because Sonya Blade's just like meditating, and then she's holding this orb. Which you pointed out looks like the Hellraiser thing. <laughs> and it moves, yeah, um, it moves around like that. And so, yeah, again, like 1904 New York City firemen walking into uh, Aristocrats Frozen and then Sonya Blade meditating with her Hellraiser orb. <laughs> and then we go into the orb. Into and the orb. See some like eyes in there and I think something growls or something like that. And so you're kind of like, okay, that's not where I thought that was going to go. <laughs> not at all. I slammed his bitch in. Let's watch this. <laughs> <laughs> they start with the family on a, on a mission. Yeah, on a mission to bust some ghosts. And it's kind of funny because this is, I feel like, the first movie that's actually said, we're going to bust some ghosts. Yeah, they keep doing this. They're just like, we're saying it. We're saying it, guys. Ghost busters. I have a ghost to bust. I have a ghost, ghost to, to bust. bust. <laughs> While you've been out busting ghosts, my engineers have been thinking about... Can't stop saying it. I mean, neither could we. Let's be real. (laughs) That's another thing, too. We got a couple comments giving us shit for making too many immature jokes about busting. And And then in the Frozen Empire trailer, they've got Paul Rudd going, Busting makes me feel good. I mean, come on. Also, yeah. We all get it. We're all in on it, right? The Ghostbusters series has a long legacy. of these kind of jokes and we are just carrying that on it's a horny franchise constantly people are talking about fucking a ghost fucking the paranormal slime i mean vinkman is just a sex predator constantly yeah sex pest at Uh, the very least yeah yeah at the very least although given his behavior in the video game it you know (laughs) it might be predatorial yes Uh, But so, yeah, they are busting ghosts and Bust. they uh, come across, uh, as Phoebe tells us, the Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon, a which big is, old CGI fucking mess, which I'm pretty sure is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they have to uh, bust out all their new technology to catch this sewer dragon, including the drone, the ghost drone. The Ghostbusters, too, have entered the modern hellscape of uh, warfare drone in the 21st warfare. century. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not now drone operators uh <laughs> she's got the fucking goggles and everything they got all this new tech and you know you you see the ghostbusters becoming almost a dystopian police force yeah. uh, in new york city uh, employed by the government yeah when are they gonna get one of the robot dogs that's got a <laughs> trap on it <laughs> They have all these uh, government contracts with the city of New York, but then they get busted for their uh, child labor practices. Which I pointed out to Addison. I mean, I guess they have, like, contracts or whatever, but, like, you can't can't take the family out busting ghosts? (laughs) That's against the law? Show me the law. (laughs) Show me the law. (laughs) There's not a loophole for this? I thought this was America. Me, I can't take my own spawn out to defeat evil. It's like going fishing. That's fucking bullshit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually dope. I fuck with this. Yeah, the flooded hotel. Yeah. It's definitely the most original thing in here. Yeah. And like interesting, I guess. Yeah. Like if I saw this in a fucking Ghostbusters movie, I would oh, be like, all yeah, right, this absolutely. is dope as hell. But now the crew has to uh, sideline Phoebe. Of course. She's no longer part of the crew. Yeah. And she's super bummed about it because her whole life is is ghost busting. It's in her DNA. 
Why did it go down again? Oh, did you just notice the bar things? No, but oh. it, it seems to be like randomly. The artifact is a sconce just in this, on like, the wall. one little spot? There's it's, nothing there! <laughs> it's not the candelabra? No. Oh, it's just because it's sparky. Oh. oh. <gasps> the sconce! I literally joked earlier that it was a sconce. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I been haunting the Sedgwick since. <laughs> it literally is the Flying Dutchman from SpongeBob. Two. <laughs> oh my God! How many of these things are there? And then it takes oh like my nine God. years to shoot one. They're bu they're busting me now. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're getting busted by the ghost. The ghosts are gonna make <laughs> you bust. She goes to see Ray in podcast, and we see that the mini marshmallows are still around because we we still gotta sell those plushies we made uh, three years ago. They've got yeah, they've got warehouses full of these <laughs> fucking things. They're like, no, put them in the sequel too, please, yeah. please, God. So even though Gozer is no longer around anywhere in sight, the marshmallows are still moving around. No matter how many times you see them destroy themselves on screen, they're ke they keep coming out of nowhere. There's no end to the amount of mini marshmallows that they will put on screen. We will always have mini stay puffed and they'll be killing themselves in gruesome ways and we're supposed to love it. My you, kids love the marshmallow minions. You pointed out that they're just trying to do minions and they are 100% just trying to do minions. <laughs> it's so, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh my God, how did I not see it? Like, it's so fucking transparent. Like, again, secondhand embarrassment versus wanting to roll my eyes out of my fucking skull, you know? <laughs> And yeah, so, you know, Dan Aykroyd is still running his occult store. And then we get a, a, what we thought, what I thought from the trailer was going to be a cameo from Kamel Nanjiani. But <laughs> little did we know that we were actually being introduced to a very important character. Yes, with uh, lots of lore. Yes, uh, deep lore. Mm. Per perhaps deeper lore than any of the characters actually in the, uh, oh, in the sure. movie. Ancient lore. Ancient lore. Yeah, he's trying to pawn off uh, the Hellraiser ball. Yes. Which belonged to his grandmother. Who is Sonya Blade. Yes. Was Sonya Blade. Was Sonya Blade. My bad. I'm sorry, Camille Nanjiani's fake character from <laughs> Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So he brings it into uh, Ray's shop. And with a, 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 a mere tickle of the PKE meter, what mm. happens? I don't really know. <laughs> so All frozen hell breaks loose. <laughs> For a second, we see the streets of New York erupting in ice. It's pre. And then it just kind of stops. And then everyone kind of goes back to acting like that wasn't a weird thing. And Yeah, like nothing like that has ever foretold something worse happening in these people's careers, you know? Yeah. Surely no reason to maybe give this some, some special attention. No, he just sets it back on the shelf. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> is this like the HVAC demon? What is happening here? Back home, we've we're we're catching back up with lackluster Trevor. Finn Wolfhard still funding his band's tours with these Ghostbusters movies and putting in um, an entire point zero six ounces of effort. You picked the wrong house, bro. That delivery was amazing. I mean, it's just, I'm yeah. so in it. Apparently there's things happening around the firehouse. So they think there's a ghost somewhere. So yeah, he's assigned to the task of, of finding this ghost and suspiciously finds a, a damp crevice in the <laughs> ceiling. Why, Why would just, you ever? Let me ever. stick my finger into it. Why would you ever? <laughs> let me just Mom. finger fuck this moldy <laughs> hole in my ceiling. This is not possible. Not here, not now, not again. Why did, you, why did Dan Aykroyd sound like an anime voice actor right then? Not again. Ugh. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man? Not uh, again. Uh, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. <laughs> Not again. Not again. It wasn't me this time, I swear it. No, apparently it doesn't have to be. Mm. No. It could be it, just for any reason. <laughs> on a fucking Tuesday. That's so cute. Like, when they made this video game, they thought they still had to give a reason to have <laughs> the Stay Puffed Marshmallows come to life. Now, like, pretense. Nah. Throw them in. Stay Puffed is somehow hatching these... 
mini minions from himself. Oh, the mini, mini minions. minions. Oh my god, mini minions. <laughs> it's just like what you were saying. <laughs> because Phoebe is no longer allowed to work as a Ghostbuster, um, she's aimless. She used to have her chest set by her bed that her grandfather at a point moved pieces around on. And so now she takes her chess board to the park to tap back in with those feelings of playing with her ghost grandfather. And for a moment, perhaps we are led to believe he's come back. He's still here. He didn't dissolve into nothing, but he's he's moving pieces around. They're playing an old game again. But no. It's a completely random ghost instead that has no connection to this character or any characters in these movies. Ghost Girl. Ghost Girl. We don't know her name, actually. She has a Did name, look I'm it up? sure. I think it's Melody. We're going to call her Ghost Girl because that's what Ghost we Girl. called her for the last few days. Do you have your eight-sided dice with you? No, but I have my 20-sided dice. You can't use something as simplistic as an eight-sided die with this kind of campaign. I have everything from four-sided to 20-sided. I even have a 50-sided, but you're not going to see that. Until we need the big guns, of course. <laughs> This is a, actually probably a good place to start talking about the quote-unquote humor in this movie, or its absolute lack thereof. Mm. And you're not terrified of me? No. Uh, Should I be? Ghosts are quirky, fun. Usually people run by now. I don't know why. I've never heard that particular exchange in a movie before. I don't even think. Maybe so, but it just feels played out. Or that no one thinks it's funny and yet they're reading the lines. I don't know. It just does not land. Heck, tussie. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the act to see. <laughs> so at a point, once the ghost busting team has busted ghosts and they're, I think it's the Hell's Kitchen Sewer Dragon that they're putting, loading the ghost trap into the ghost containment device. Saying the catchphrase, if the light is green, the trap is clean. Which they say every single time they do it and has been handed down generation to generation through the ghost busting lineage. Someone at some point told them that they have to say that when they put the trap in. So, so the trap is now physically full, apparently, and they're beginning to see that uh, this could have some ramifications, right? The ghost could break out potentially, but actually our brilliant entrepreneur Winston and his crew over at the Ghost Corps, I mean, Ghost Labs, I mean, whatever it's called, um, has drummed up a solution, and they've built an all-new ghost containment unit that has hectares worth of, which is a crazy measurement to use in this, uh, hectares worth of space for all all the ghoulies that they need to transfer over from the full containment unit into the new containment unit. I'm on your side. I bust alone, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> Woody when Andy walks in the room. <laughs> so Winston takes the family to the new facility and shows them the horrific experiments he's been conducting on ghosts and various paranormal objects where he's found a way to kill ghosts. Yeah, it's like a ghost black site. <laughs> like they're just doing unspeakable things to ghosts in this place. Torturing them to study and... Uh, Watching them die. Yes. We also catch up with Lucky here, which we had completely forgotten that was her character's name, but sure, yeah. I guess it definitely was the whole time. Makes um, more sense than podcast, I guess. Yeah, yeah, which he has not changed his name. I was sure he was going to be like Keith or something at this point, but no, no such luck mm -hmm. there. Lucky is doing like an internship at the ghost lab. Um, so we're all kind of reunited essentially at this point. And we began looking through their cast of ghost characters that they have around lurking about this facility. And How fun. It becomes real quirky, real yeah. quick. Yeah, because Dan Aykroyd points out a new audience favorite to be sure, the possessor. Th what an original concept. It's a, get this, it's a ghost that possesses things wait what do you what kind of things anything 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 oh no way <laughs> uh, yeah no like literally guys anything if you haven't seen this movie 
any object, any it will get in and they will begin object. CG animating this thing to rock around and bounce around and um, incredibly fucking stupid. And that's just the beginning of mm-hmm. the stupidity related to the possessor. <laughs> They're also calling it the possessor, and I'm like, this should be some like demonic force. And instead, yeah. it's like inside of the folding chair, tapping at the glass. That's such a stay puffed thing to do. Dude, right? To break through the wall like that. So stay puffed. Classic stay puffed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Acting. Dude. Strong signal. Strong signal. Oh no. Oh, I thought all those birds were dead. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they're falling out of the sky. <laughs> stay puffed, this isn't you. <laughs> this isn't the stay puffed I know. But while we're at the facility, we also meet a new uh, ghost doctor character who explains more about the technology and about the haunted artifact science that they're doing, where... Uh, it's very exact. Yes. It's very exact. Yes. Spirits get attached to objects that have experienced traumatic events. Not it being around for a traumatic experience, but it experiences it's it. It's actually right. experiencing no. it. If, yes. if you're at a family reunion and one of your family members suffers a heart attack and there's a bong on the table, that bong, it, it feels the pain. It experiences the pain. It mm. experiences the grief it's and true. the sadness. It's and true. it binds that spirit to it. Yeah. And it's now a, a haunted bong. <laughs> But luckily, with this new technology, you could take your bong to the ghost killing machine, <laughs> extract the ghost from the bong. Which you think would be enough. Yes, but then you must obviously reduce, reuse, recycle, <laughs> and um, convert the ghost into uh, propellant or some kind of fuel, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And you don't, you don't just, that is not an internal combustion system necessarily. There's a, a viewing area for this to take place (laughs) we get to watch every single ghost (laughs) just die another death oh look it looks like he has like a chin strap right now (laughs) (laughs) that was so good (gasps) no i didn't want to kill my dessert I didn't want to kill Stay Puffed. I love him. He's a part of my childhood. (laughs) Peck looks like the Bam Margera model in Tony Hawk's Underground. (laughs) You guys go with Winston and the recruit. I'll be your personal protection. Cover your drink, (laughs) Ailsa. Phoebe is hanging out with Ghost Girl and is, like, amazed that Ghost Girl can do ghost things. It seems like her and her mother have had some... Kind of blow to the head. Yeah, like an amnesia event. Uh, her mother is surprised to hear that there's another plane of yeah, existence. Yeah, after death. Uh, earlier in the film. Yeah, yeah, she's like, what are you talking about? There's something happens after we die? The other side? Are we talking about... I don't know what we're talking about. Has she not they been a been, Ghostbuster been, for? You've literally. <laughs> did you not hug your dead father's ghost before he ascended into the sky? Yeah, and then Phoebe's like, "You're a ghost, and you can move through a wall." Yeah, and we're like, "Dude, you holy been... <laughs> shit! Aren't you a Ghostbuster? <laughs> Weren't you previously uh, chasing after the Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon? And now you're like, but a oh, ghost uh, that can walk through walls? <laughs> oh, oh my god! Whoa! Uh... Next, you're gonna be saying ghosts can float above the ground. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. But yeah, so Phoebe and Ghost Girl are getting closer. And we find out that the ghost girl, her traumatic item is a matchbook. Yes. And so she's always carrying that with her. And then, because like I said, the movie's been a little quiet for a bit, our glyph ball awakens. Yes, randomly. Nothing happened to it. Nobody touched it. Wait, don't they put it in the device? That's another scene. That's a scene before this. The technician like... Oh, okay. ...lifts it and touches it and it... It freaks out. Right. And then I think it freaks out again when no one's at the facility. 
Ah, I'm just going to start yelling as though I'm an old ghost. Ah, ah. <laughs> Sexual harassment is against the law. Somebody should tell Vinkman. We kept trying to figure out because we're like, okay, so Ray used the PKE meter. That kind of disturbed it. Yes. But then after that, it's anything that happens involving it, including the camera shooting it, <laughs> <laughs> will uh, disturb the icy being within. But then we we find out. We knew. And I, I thought it might be a different angle. Mm -hmm. But we do find out that uh, Ghost Girl is not quite as innocent as, as she may first seem. She's mm. not, her intentions uh, are not necessarily pure. She has ulterior and an, an ulterior motive. Yes. We see that she's communicating with the ghostly Jabba the Hutt voice yes. that is uh, floating around in the atmosphere. Yeah, our, our unseen villain at this point is speaking Huttese <laughs> to Ghost Lord Jabba Girl. says his frozen empire will last centuries. Isha <laughs> Woko Jedi Nikowa. Who is this? The ghost ninja? The hell? The ghost of Simone Biles. Is, is that that creature from Lady in the Water? You really like have to hit him with a boson or else they like get too close. <laughs> you have to hit or, Ray with a boson say, too, man. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Obliterate Ray with a <laughs> boson blast. And sometimes that's what you gotta do. And we begin to kind of get a peek behind the curtain of who this figure is once they track down Kumail Nanjiani. They track him down at his apartment, which is actually his grandmother's old apartment. Mm -hmm. And not only did his grandma have slutty art, Nipple stuff, iconic. Yeah. <laughs> what? She also had a secret room. A secret S&M chamber. Uh, and that's not us making these jokes, all right? We're referencing their horny jokes in this horny film. Whoa. This is where we do the nipple nice stuff. Sex dungeon. Okay. Don't what is what is up with her, dude? Yeah, that's yeah. as soon as I said it, I realized. You know, Ghostbusters is going back to his horny roots though. So they examine all her um, ancient bondage gear and <laughs> they say it's made out of bronze. They notice it's yeah. Is it bronze or brass? Brass. It um, is brass. Which they note uh, there are records going back to what? Like, what did they say? The times of Solomon or something like Samaria that. Samaria or something. Um, in which people would trap spirits in brass. It says here that this collector used the Grey Lady to get to the rare books in her care. Wait, slang and yeah. dick just and to get access to books? <laughs> Legendary. King nerd, dude. Oh, but he was also a serial killer. Oh, what? Oh, what? We're going to say every serial killer is just a bad guy? So after they talk to Nadim about his freaky-ass grandma, all of a sudden we see him back at the Ghostbusters headquarters getting examined by Peter Fankman, who appears with no preamble. No one mentions him coming. No one mentions why he would be coming here to examine Nadim. Nope. So they learn through the Blade Runner test that <laughs> Peter Venkman administers to this character that he has some sort of pyrokinetic abilities of some kind. We better get a scan. Of what, Ray? A scan of what? Hopped up out the bed, turn my scan on. You know what, Ray? That's, a, that's your solution to everything. Let's get a scan of it. Looked in the meter, said, what's up? <laughs> Come on. But yeah, they, they leave it vague as to what these uh, fire abilities are. And to clear up that vagueness, they go consult uh, every America's favorite quirky cameo guy, uh, your lovable nerd, Patton Oswalt. He's in all your aunt's favorite movies. 
And of course, because it's Patton Oswalt, he doesn't act at all like a different, like a character. He's just Patton Oswalt. I think he's improving a lot of his lines, it seems like. Probably. Yeah. And he's here to give us a little uh, comedic jaunt through the story of Garaka. And the reason this is extra fucking funny is because Patton Oswalt knows that they have... uh, encountered the spirit of Garaka because he remembers a round object in a petroglyph. One of the only round objects in any ancient engraving. There are no spheres in (laughs) any ancient culture. Very uncommon thing to see a sphere in an ancient inscription. (laughs) The ancient people didn't even know about circles. Actually, you notice how much they built pyramids? Yes. (laughs) They they didn't even know what a circle was. (laughs) They could have never built the sphere. Uh Uh-oh, they've got friends. Of course they have friends. What do you think the afterlife is about? (laughs) Hanging with your buds for eternity. Great, the recruit found it. Now I wonder if it's a good idea to be standing in a foot and a half of water. That's not water. Dang, what's up with all these books? <laughs> Flank her! She's got nowhere to run! Besiege her! <laughs> yeah, he takes one look at the orb and goes, It's an orb! <laughs> I know where I've seen this before. I know exactly where I've seen this. He unfolds this picture of uh, an ancient culture's stone engraving of Garaka. Yeah, the, the legend of Garaka. Recognize anything? Look, it's a ball. <laughs> Stop. Wait. It's just a... <laughs> Any kind of sphere. Look, it's about the size of a bocce ball. He you remembered that. Bocce. Yeah, he remembered it. Then this is where we start getting all into the deep lore mm. of Frozen Empire. Yeah. Part of that lore is that Nadim just ain't regular old Nadim. Mm. But he is actually... One who has been prophesied yes. about Avatar the Last Firebender. Come to save us from Garaka. Fire Master! <laughs> yeah, so this is where the movie starts getting <laughs> fucking ridiculous because we find out that, like I said, Kamel Nanjiani is not just a fun little cameo. Hmm. He is, like you said, the Fire Master. The last in a long line of Fire Masters. And we do want to remind you guys, we're, t- we're still talking about the Ghostbusters universe here. <laughs> we have not switched franchises with the Fire Master. No. Uh, this is still Ghostbusters. Exactly. Trappy. Stop. The next, the last movie in this trilogy is called Ghostbusters oh. Fire Master. <laughs> Can't believe I made it. Con- oh, oh my gosh. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh. Oh god. Oh, just obliterated the fucking. Oh god. That's awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> I literally can't get just out of here. Getting stampeded. Oh. Oh nice. Nice. Yo. Okay. B. Just with the one, two. Okay. Yeah, the Fire Masters are there to put an end to the death chill, which is this phenomena that Garaka uses to kill his foes, which may or may not be fear and or ice. There's really no telling what's supposed to be going on here. Clearly, all these people are being frozen, literally, in ice. Yet we are told what kills them is fear itself. It is either and both. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh no, my hand is scared to death. (laughs) See? Neutronized slime. The AK... 40 semen. Oh, seven. I'm sorry. (laughs) We have seen the results of the death chill before. This is what we witnessed in the opening scene when we saw all our uh, well-to-do New Yorkers frozen around the table. It was not the ice. No, they were frozen to death out of fear. It was the fear that did it. It was fear. Yes. Oh. (laughs) What? Wait. Yo. (laughs) Are we gonna she like make ghost friends with KO'd? <laughs> Is it the one she's holding? You gotta snatch that shit out that bitch's hand. <laughs> Go right next to her. Ghost her. Do a reverse ghost. 
You're Patrick Swayze, Who I but can interact you're, with the ghost finally. But you're uh, human. <laughs> you're gonna teach her how to make ghost pottery. What we also find out from Patton Oswalt is that in the opening scene, what we potentially heard was playing in this room uh, that the firefighters entered was this like chant. This or incantation. Mantra, this incantation, exactly. Thank you for that. But this is the incantation of the death chill. Hmm. And as they're inspecting this recording of the death chill chant, who pops up but yeah. our old friend the our possessor and do we do we do something interesting with the possessor no the possessor possesses the wax cylinder throws himself into a trash can and then possesses the trash bag which flees the museum <laughs> and we get to watch a cgi trash bag chase scene it's, which it's, is, it's is a great metaphor for this movie and it's exactly as exciting as it sounds yeah <laughs> stop that bag <laughs> Ghostbusters, we're running stop guys that bag. we're running after a fucking garbage bag <laughs> bag busters <laughs> It leads us out to, of course, where we have to have the the lions that we know from outside the museum come to life, and they yeah, have to. You fight, can cross that off your Ghostbusters them. bingo card. And we then got the lions, because they destroy one of the possessed lions, they disband the Ghostbusters, and I'm like. Of everything they've done, it was a stone statue that you could pay a mason to replicate. That you're like, we're not fighting ghosts anymore. I've seen what they can do to this city, but <laughs> this stone lion named Fortitude is a, is a step too far. Absolutely I mean, it was made not. so famous in the first Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> we can't have Ghostbusters running around destroying it. Haven't you guys seen the first Ghostbusters movie? <laughs> it's like <laughs> Zelda. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. It really is though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa, okay, what? The Librarian of Space and Time. This is actually a set for a Linkin Park video. <laughs> So because the city has uh, canceled their contract, revoked their license, uh, however that works, uh, it gives them time to start up their, their superhero-esque Avenger group. Yes. Uh, with the Firemaster. Of course, yeah, Ghostbusters assemble. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> phase one. <laughs> <laughs> and phase one begins with our, our new Firemaster learning his abilities um, under the tutelage of Dan Aykroyd. We, I thought for sure he was going to try to do it and fail to do it do it because that's the obvious arc of the uh, learning to use your new powers right if for based on any superhero movie you've ever seen right first time you try it doesn't go well you get disheartened mm. you don't believe that you're the fire master <laughs> how could i be the fire master and then dan Aykroyd comes and he puts his hand on your knee and he goes listen son i've fought a lot of ghosts i've seen a lot of weird things mm -hmm. if there's one thing i believe is that you've got what it takes to be just like your horny grandma and be the fire master. Yes, and that's all he needs to immediately know how to control the fire on the candle. Any tension that could have been there is relieved instantly. Yep. He just does it. He's okay. like, oh, look, I can. Okay, great. <laughs> and he's never noticed this. He's never been no. near a flame. <laughs> he closed like Dude, me. he did. I'm just going to see what happens. Oh yeah. Oh, she's no way. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, I can take over. Oh, I <laughs> threw it into the portal. It the portal. <laughs> it, did it come out the other side? Look, go look on here. Oh no, it's at least oh, over here. Oh, that would have been sick. Um. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the ragdoll physics just killing it. Of course, we have uh, what we can only assume was a montage scene of Nadim exercising and training with his fire powers <laughs> that was cut out. Mm. Uh, instead, what we get is a is a great, you, you love it, the teenage angst. Yeah. Mom and dad, you don't get it. Step mom and dad, step Gruberson and dad. Mom, step Gruberson and mom. Gruberson and mom. <laughs> step Grub. Step Grub, you don't get it. And so Phoebe decides to link up with the dead homie. Out of her anger, she decides to become like the dead homie. She offers to 
turn herself into a ghost for a little bit, she says. Just a bit. Uh, uh, apparently, she is now confident that the ghost extermination machine will be able to pull her own soul out of her body. In ghost form. In ghost form. Yep. Somehow, between her asking the technician if they've ever tried pulling a possessed ghost out of a human body, and him saying, no, we haven't done that, she now thinks it's relatively safe she says non-lethal to pull her own soul out of her body there's now a two minute time limit yeah on the soul being out of the body which has never been established nope i don't know how she knows about it nope and then we find out the ghost girl somehow knew about this technology also because while phoebe is in ghost form she realizes that by doing so, she has fallen directly into Garaka's evil plan. Exactly. Where Garaka takes control of her spirit and forces her to say the incantation that will bring him back to life like Beetlejuice. And because she's saying it in spirit form, her physical body says it out loud, which is what allows him to come back into being. Yes, yeah. Apparent they so yes, they say that apparently for him to come back a human, like a mortal has to speak the word. It cannot be a ghost mm. speaking. It has no. to be an actual living human saying the words. And so yes, somehow But Garaka cannot possess a human body. He can only possess a ghost, which sure. sure. Yeah, sure. Phoebe gets possessed by Garaka. He does his incantation, which yes, transfers to her unconscious body inside the ghost machine where she's just like slumped over yes. but saying these words. Even though she's like technically dead right now, her yes. mouth is still moving along with her spirit words. But she was saying lines in her ghost form before that. But her physical body wasn't. Yeah, wait, that's them. true. It's only when Garaka possesses yes. <laughs> a ghost that he can use their dead body to actually say things. It actually makes so much sense. Yes, now, <laughs> now that you put it like that. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to murder myself real quick. Uh, guys, I'm just going to off myself and become a ghost for two minutes. Wait, shut the Let's fuck up. Let's get the timer. But so because then the time limit is up, she goes back into her own body. Because so glad knows, that worked. Everybody knows that if you're not dead, you can only be a ghost for two minutes. That's just the maximum. Mm. I mean, there's a physical law of the universe that states. I think there's a math equation. That I think they call it the two minute rule. Seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder what Ray and Egon are up to. Okay, I've tried this one twice already. Oh. So it's got to be another one. Thanks for checking it's in. Pretty heady, bro. So she's back in her body. Garaka stops by the vape store and looking for the fire master. Yeah. yeah. Spare the blunt wraps. <laughs> yes, Garaka comes into the uh, earthly plane along with his frozen empire, which is stabbing giant icicles of fear through people and um yeah and it's again like just to point out i thought this is what the movie was gonna be mm. and we're we're like in the last 30 minutes yeah the last movie. 30 minutes is when things begin freezing over like you see all the shots of the storm over the ocean and the beach yep. goers fleeing from the ice spikes or whatever yeah it's like the last 25 minutes <laughs> what? Just, said the, just the, the beach umbrella, umbrella getting struck by lightning in air. Oh, look at that. They do a little shake or How something. How much did they pay for that shot? <laughs> that useless shot. I also have a theory. Can I uh, run this by you? So we don't start super horny, but obviously the horny is when they're exploring grandma's mm. house largely. But I do think it makes sense, actually. I think they meant to do this because as Garaka came out and it got colder, you can't get hard when it's freezing outside. All right. <laughs> no one is. No one's keeping a bone mm. when... Uh, when it's sub-zero, okay, mm -hmm. the colder the movie gets, the less horny the movie gets. It See, makes, it's intentional. It's all intentional. Sense. So the death chill isn't ice or fear. It's shrinkage. <laughs> oh, everything upside down. That's kind of cool. I like this room. Oh, ah, ah. Look for the long staircase. The exit portal is at the very top. Brother, I'm just walking towards novelty. 
But Garaka's back. He's uh, he goes and gets his horns. Yes, he's at full power now. He frees all the ghosts that are trapped inside the ecto container. And can I just complain for a second? Because we don't get any cool ghost in a diner, ghost in a taxi shot, anything like that. They all look like sheet over nothing with the two eye holes ghosts Mm -hmm. escaping from the thing. Last minute Halloween costume ghosts. Yeah, and then that's like all we see of them. Yeah. We get like that shot where they're all flying out of the building and stuff which we all Because you called it. You called it. (laughs) You knew it was going to happen. You've got to have one, right? And then of course we think, okay, you're going to see the skeleton taxi guy or one of the other memorable ghosts from the other movies. Or a new one even. Or a new one. A plumber. Instead, we get nothing. Nothing. Oh, my God. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> the last Jedi. Oh, my God. Look at him go. Look at him. <laughs> You're doing, You're doing it. it. We get a hilarious intro from the Firemaster where he slides down the pole and makes the loud noise and it keeps takes him a minute to get down it um because he's wearing hilarious armor (laughs) he's wearing the sonya blade uniform that his grandmother wore so it's like ill-fitting yeah it's like hanging off his legs the firemaster comes out to save the team from their peril from their icy peril and yeah he can't get it up yeah he sparks his zippo a couple times and just he's shooting blanks Womp womp. Yeah. And so, very fortunately... uh, Ghost Girl has had a change of heart. Yes. She sees the error of her ways. Yes. And says, Garaka, I I will ally myself with those who seek your downfall. (laughs) Yes. Nadim, craft it. Use the fire. (laughs) Meld it. (laughs) You are the chosen one. We get our first true kind of Marvel showdown, Ice v. Fire. Thanks. Yes. This is definitely what Robert Frost was talking about when he wrote that <laughs> poem. I'm realizing it now. It was Nadim the Firemaster and Garaka the Ice Lord. But, of course, because this is a Ghostbusters movie and not a Firemasters mm. movie yet, Fire Blastin' ain't enough. It, it just ain't enough. You need some good old bustin' too. We need the Avengers. Yes. We need the Ghost Avengers. So as the Fire Master is launching his it's his name his beam his fire beam they also join in with their proton streams and phoebe's uh yes phoebe comes in with her brass equipped proton pack <laughs> also so as the families struggling together blasting garaka with their combined forces the old busters team up to reset the containment unit i guess or they flip some big switch on it he actually begins explaining what they're gonna do and bill murray shuts him up because there's actually no real reason this should work Mm. given that all of the ghosts broke out that the containment physically broke physically breached the metal that makes it up and yet they're somehow uh, they the power of, of the polarity uh, hope. of something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they managed to suck Garaka back into the trap that was so full that it broke open, which necessitated the larger facility being built, but which now is completely forgotten about in the movie and tossed away. And the force that brings him back into the trap also repairs the trap, physically pulling the hole back together. Yeah, Garak is also, also a welder. <laughs> it just it kind of looks like his hand is like grabbing it and pulling it back together. How gross this. <laughs> what? What? Why? Why? But he broke out of the Wait, wait, he's closing it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was convenient. He's got nothing that can resist the proton stream. Yes, sir. He's got nothing that can resist the proton nothing stream. Nothing can resist a proton stream. As it lore, the tortured has nothing that can resist a proton stream. Yeah, how about a boson dart in your fucking eyeball? Oh, get your boys. Oh. Uh, Hose them down! <laughs> And then we can't forget that it's not just the proton pack, the the firemaster, and the containment unit that sucks them back in. It's Mama Spangler, Gruberson, and Finn Wolfhard helping Phoebe hold her, her proton blaster. Yeah. That really does it. 
had she not been giving Finn Wolfhard a piggyback ride there at the end, there's no way that they would have been able to uh, trap uh, Garaka. Oh, Jesus. No, and the homie's down again. No, put, give me up, give me up, give me up. You gotta give me up. Oh, Egon's down again. No, I got you. I got you. No Ghostbuster left behind. It's funny because they beat Garaka and Winston says something like, the light is green, the whole world is clean. Oh, yeah. They say right after that, though, that the ghosts are still on the loose. All the ghosts that broke out of the containment unit are still out there. That's right. We see the, the Hell's Kitchen sewer dragon again and Slimer, maybe. Probably. So the world is not clean. And we get to, that's, we're going to actually just reboot the whole franchise because now all the ghosts are loose again and we can just go <laughs> catch them all again in all the exact same ways. Just like the video game. We'll go back to the hotel. We'll get, you know, we'll do everything exactly the same. When the light is green. The whole world is clean. What? The whole world is clean. Wait. Yeah, man down, man down. It's we need man up. <laughs> we need to man up. Rip his mask off. We need to man up, y'all. I'm talking about responsibility right now, okay? Okay, that first half was atrocious. It's time to nut up or bust up. Y'all need to bust, okay? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. They're both down all of a sudden. Uh... Oh, and now Egon's fucking dead again. Nice. Well done, dude. Well done. Okay, we gotta go rescue. Oh, fuck. Oh, now they're both down. Of course. Of course. Of course. Not to turn on the Ghostbusters and side with Azit Lore. <laughs> Guys, my cadet training's been great, but me and Azit Lore have a shared passion for your demise. Yeah. Uh, wait, where's the boy? I know. Got you, dog. Let's go. And oh, he's I just down fucking again. picked you up, you useless sack of shit. Yeah, so that's really the anti-climax of the movie. I guess they knew that wasn't quite enough to satisfy audiences, so they stuck a post credit scene at the end. Of your favorite little goobers. Well, you didn't get enough of them in the movie, did you? Look at them go. Look at them. They're stealing the truck. They can drive a truck. And these little buggers can be yours for only six ninety nine. <laughs> Go to Baskin Robbins and get your <laughs> mini Stay Puffed plushie now with your double Slimer scoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, fucking. Fucking God. <laughs> fucking finally. Yeah, so it is kind of a a weak attempt at this marvelization of expanding this lore out to other things besides Gozer and Vigo and New York City and uh, branching out a little bit. But it's just bland. Yeah. It is different than Afterlife because Afterlife, they kind of wrung out all of the fan service in one movie. Like we said, they did kind of reference everything you could reference. And so this is kind of just its own thing. And so it's, uh, what I said to you is it's kind of just a great movie to roast mm. because it's not like funny bad um, and it's not again like made by an idiot like 2016 like again it's right. kind of it's a competent enough movie for for what movies are getting released now yeah like it is a very average movie for the past five years you know which means it is yeah borderline incompetent but it is it is technically a movie I think that's the new tool album cover I guess I thought when they talked about marvelizing the Ghostbusters, what they meant was kind of establishing more lore to the villains and the bigger world around them, like they kind of do a little bit with Garaka, even though it's fucking dumb. I really didn't expect them to say, no, the Ghostbusters aren't good enough. We need a mythical fire clan of warrior monks to help the ghost but that's not what i pictured when i thought about the extended ghostbusters universe but that's what we got yeah i i don't know i foresaw when i heard 
Ghostbusters Frozen Empire was we're going to get somebody like Garaka. Sure, that was fine. The creature design was even okay. I liked the shot of the horns kind of unwinding or whatever. It was mm-hmm. interesting. But I thought there was going to be like ice ghouls or ice spirits that he was like summoning. You could like, be forgiven for thinking that would happen. Right? Like from the shots from the trailer where we said it's like a fucking, it's like an old Navy commercial or something. That sequence, it feels very out of place. Mm-hmm. Um, but the shots where the ice spikes are coming out of the ocean, you think there's going to be some ice army or something that comes up out of the waves. And then that's what, like, I thought it was going to go that scale of stupid that yeah, Marvel yeah, does. Yeah, right. And it doesn't, which is gr- great. You know, again, yeah, like it shouldn't be that. Not stupid. that I wanted it to do that. Right. But, but that's definitely what I expected. Mm. And so, yes, the addition of the fire master is like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, it's Kamel Nagiani. I'm sorry. He's just permanently the dude from Silicon Valley to me. Also mm-hmm. hilarious that he's in a Marvel movie. Yes, he is now an eternal and a fire. He's an eternal fire master. <laughs> hey, it's Rick Moranis's character. I think another problem is there's too many characters yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And that contributes to the unfocused nature. We can't spend time developing this story, really, or paying off this conclusion because there's so many different characters we have to spend time with. I think you made a joke when we were watching Afterlife that instead of passing the torch onto a younger generation of Ghostbusters, they just added more people to the team. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And in this one, that's taken to a ridiculous level because by the end of the movie, you literally have, I counted, 11 people in Ghostbusters out fits that's janine, not counting the fire master janine is in a ghostbusters uniform with a yes. proton pack podcast is there but he's distracted by the mini stay puffs like exactly how he was in afterlife so he's not really doing anything one thing i'll say is that i think they're trying the marvelization thing too late there's already the wear and tear on audiences of like fucking nine years or whatever of like 40 marvel movies uh, a season they're trying this formula that's already stale and so yes even whatever wow factor it may have potentially had just like you're like god no not another one is this (laughs) wait is this the eternals did we put on the eternals i think the thing is that dan Aykroyd does make a good pitch for it being a very like technically expansive universe there's a lot you can do there yeah the problem is just what they continue to do is bad and Mm. so like there's your track record you know is like what six Five? Five movies now, four of which are bad. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a ghost? Every day of my life, dear. (laughs) I think about killing myself all the time. I mean, the only other thing I could think to say is, like, if you're still watching Ghostbusters movies, like, sure, I guess watch it. As far as a recommendation goes, I think it kind of, it's obvious how we feel about it. Yeah. After we just talked about it for an hour, but. And I think, I'm sure a lot of people who've loved Ghostbusters for decades and decades are kind of, in a way, ready for them to do something different. Yeah. But I think I can safely say, this isn't what you wanted. No. And it doesn't, it seems like, like, I think we even got a few comments of people who were like, oh God, mm-hmm. like Frozen Empire is fucking bad. Yeah. So, you know, remains to be seen whether they'll green light a third installment be in this kind universe. Of surprised, yeah. At that point, Finn Wolfhard's just going to be mumble rapping his lines. Like, it's just, he's barely going to be speaking. He's also going to be 30 years old. Aw, Z. Aw, Z. I think we're going to wrap up this wrap up. Wrap up the wrap up. We love you all. As always, we want to just say super appreciative to everybody. Yes, many thanks. Out there. Uh, We hope you guys hate all these movies too. (laughs) (laughs) We hope that through our hatred, you can achieve some kind of catharsis. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. At the very least, this is a bit of catharsis. Uh, A cathartic bitching session. Yes, we can all be haters together. But yes, thank you for joining us for yet another uh, Outside Intel wrap up. And we are actually hoping to be back soon with uh, a few things. Yeah. We got... we got some stuff in the works, y'all. We got some stuff. Yes, more sharp decline and more uh, experiments. Ooh. Straight. Ooh. Coming straight. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's got moves. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. We're going to end with this. We love you guys. Peace out. Peace. Oh, 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 oh.
Whoa. Slime blower. I hardly know her. Why'd you take my item? Big old bitties. Greatest athlete alive, some say. 640 games, 13 home runs. <laughs> the goals. Think of it like a thin foreskin around reality. The world on stream. Wrangle, Wrangle the, the beams with, with your, your capture, capture stream. <laughs> you don't get what it's like to be a child with the teeth of Gary Busey. <laughs> Warlocks of the afterlife. Band name. <laughs> Brass Pro Shop. Come on.